93.3 The Wolf, the Valley's Rock Station, Fast Freddy, and my special guest this afternoon, Austin Town Fitch Falcon, Ohio State Buckeye, and now Cincinnati Bengal. It's my man, Billy Price. Billy, how you been, man? Man, I've been well, man. I really appreciate you having me on the show today. Hey, I've, I've been waiting for a while to get you on, and we've finally been able to work it out thanks to your dad, and I'm really happy about that. So uh, for people that aren't really familiar with your career, how did you go from Austin Town, Ohio, to the NFL? Um. Well, in a quick way to say it, I guess, you know, I had my football opportunity at Austin Town Fitch. I, I actually had the opportunity to go to Youngstown Ursuline, but chose not to, and uh, stayed, here, stayed at home in Austin Town with Coach Anarella. Uh, just a real good fit for myself and the opportunities playing D1 ball. Uh, you know, from there, again, going into junior, senior year, you know, Ohio State was pretty much my, my main selection, you know, place where I found it was home. Best for academics, best for athletics, and then, you know, having Urban Meyer as your head coach, you just can't go wrong there. Um, you know, took the most and made the most of my five years at Ohio State. I redshirted my freshman year, uh, made a position change from defensive line to offensive line, and uh, ever since then, it's just it just things took off. Uh, had a really very successful senior year at Ohio State. Was you know uh, blessed to be selected in the first round by the Bengals down here, and we're enjoying it. And we're learn it's a learning process in the NFL. Uh, again, you know, being a rookie, it's uh, the highs and lows, and the lows are real low, and the highs can be real high. So it's it's a it's a learning process, but. It's all about the journey and continuing to get better and continuing to learn more about yourself and about the game of football. Very cool. What did you think about the Ohio State-Michigan game this year? It was crazy. I actually, um, I, you know, being a pass player, I can't sit down and watch a full game. Uh, I can't, like, physically sit down and watch it just because, again, you know what's going on. You've been there with the coaches. You, for me, it was fresh. Again, those guys, I've played with most of them. And, you know, but – you know, coming in and checking the score and whatnot was crazy. You know, 62 to 39, something I wasn't expecting. Uh, I got a, I got a Michigan guy in my locker room here, the Bengals and Ryan Glasgow, and you know, he said the same thing. He thought it was going to be a lot tighter, and then seeing Ohio State just, just completely just destroy and and offensively just do whatever they wanted to against Michigan, it was awesome to see. So, what was it like for you to be in those games and to win those games? What was that? What was that high like? I mean, it's it's different. Um, it's different because you've got your own hand and you've got your responsibilities in that game and you don't really understand the magnitude of the things you're doing because you're in the moment and you're in those, in those situations and in those games, you know, and the craziest aspect of it is the Ohio state Michigan game has been going on for hundred, about a hundred and some years or so or so. And to actually put your name in the record books and to write history, it's just unreal. Um, but coming off those games, again, the city of Columbus shuts down on Saturdays in the fall because Ohio state's playing. So, uh, anywhere you go, people recognize you. I mean, it's it's just it's awesome down there. So winning those games, going five and go five and zero against a team up north, uh, there's nothing much better than that. Yeah, that is. Now, were you surprised when uh, Urban Meyer stepped down? I was a little bit. Uh, I thought, you know, I, there was a couple conversations we had in the locker room amongst those guys and guys who were interested in, and from about Ohio State's coach. Um, I thought, you know, it might have been next year again. I know he's, you know, on his way for his second grandchild. Uh, I know his relationship with his first grandchild, Troy, um, his oldest daughter, Nikki, had Troy, and he's been loving it. You know, <laughs> I always told him, I said, he gets, he gets soft anytime Troy's around. I said, he looks at Troy like he looks at a national championship trophy. It's, <laughs> it's kind of it's something, it's something else. But, again, you can't take the competitive nature out of coach. So um, I'm no, I know he'll be around the university in some facet, but to, to what degree and to what his responsibilities are, I'm sure that's, that's still unwritten. Very good, very good. We're talking with Cincinnati Bengal, Austintown, Ohio resident, Billy Price. And uh, Now, Billy, what was your uh, first uh, pro football game that you went to, and what team do, did you root for growing up? Uh, so I've actually never been to a pro football game until I actually played in one. Um, and kind of being from Youngstown, my stepfather was a Steelers fan, and so I kind of grew up on the Heinz Ward, the Heath, the Heath Miller, the uh, Jerome Bettis, James Harrison kind of era with the Pittsburgh Steelers. So... Uh, kind of it's a rival rivalry now again, but you know again it's being a fan and being you know eight nine ten eleven twelve and so forth on, you know you can't you can't knock me for that. Now I know your dad was a big Rams fan. Was he a little bummed out that you didn't end up with them? Well, the fun fun story about it during the draft process, I actually had a top thirty visit scheduled for LA. Uh huh. And I told I told him about it. He he got all excited. He said, "Oh man, you're going to be you know the, the potential for you to be a Ram. I mean that's just awesome." Um, you know, they made a couple trades and then they, they, did, they called my agents up and said, you know, Hey, yeah, we think that, you know, Billy's going to be drafted a little bit higher than where our first pick is. Um, you know, we'll just go ahead and cancel that. So he was a little bit bummed to hear that, but again, 
my dad's been a Rams fan since day one. I know so, that. You know, anybody who talks about anybody who talks about a fair weather fan, that's not my dad. He <laughs> has been ever since I was six, seven years old. I remember the mini helmets and the throwbacks. You know, he still has those in his bedroom. Oh, I know, I know. And now, uh, now your dad played football too. Was he an inspiration or a motivation for you over the years? Um, you know, he had his hand in football a little bit, but he and I can talk. It's a different type of relationship. You know, he was a defensive player. I was an, I'm an offensive player. Um, so kind of what he sees and how I can translate it into the terms that we use today or how we view some of these things today, it's it's always a good, you know, a great conversation between him and I. We uh, we still, you know, I'll call. If he doesn't come down to the game on Sunday, I'll give him a call Monday night. We talk about the game. We've been doing this since I was in high school. Right, right. So yeah. it's been it's it's been growing. It's been awesome because having somebody like that in your life and somebody who's had a firsthand experience about it, it's it, it, you create a special bond with that. Very good, very good. Now, what what's a normal week like for you? What's your work week like? <laughs> Seven days a week. The grind don't stop. Uh huh. Um, you know. Uh, so obviously, we play on Sunday. Uh, Monday will come in anywhere, you know, for, for rookies is a little bit earlier just because the young guy or first and second year players lift, um, you know, that'll be anywhere between 10 a.m. 10 a.m. to 11. And then we'll have different various meetings and whatnot. We'll get out probably roughly about 3.30 on Monday. Uh, Tuesday's our off day, but we come in on Tuesday at, uh, at 9 a.m. with the quarterbacks and we review film, blitz, tendencies, et cetera. Uh, and then we lift at 10. And so that's Tuesday, Wednesday. Wednesday first meetings for me is at 7 a.m. with Coach Pollock, uh, you know, getting a little bit of extra time on the game plan and what we're going to do and how we're going to attack these guys. Uh, and then we don't finish up on when, on Wednesday up until about 4.30 in the afternoon. Uh, Thursday, first meetings at 7.30, a field goal, and then, again, we don't finish up until about 4.15 that afternoon. Wow. Uh, Friday, yeah, it's, it's, it's long. Friday's a little bit shorter, uh, 8 a.m. first meeting, we get done with captain's meetings about 1230 in the afternoon. So it's a Friday's a little bit shorter Saturday, uh, you know, mock game, walkthrough type aspect. Uh, first meeting is at eight 15 and then we're done by 1230 on Saturday. And then we're in the hotel Saturday at seven 30 in the evening. Well, like you say, that grind just doesn't stop. Now, when you're in the weight room or you're getting ready for the game, is there any music or any bands or anything that you listen to to get you pumped up and get you fired up? Oh yeah, we. Uh, my dad and I. We used to listen to Skid Row as when I was growing up playing football for the uh, West Catholic Crusaders. It's a uh, St. Christine's Youth League. Uh, my fourth, fifth, and sixth grade team. You know, West Catholic Crusaders. We always used to uh, Youth Gone Wild by Skid Row. Um, and for me now, again, it's a little bit more hip hop, a little more pop, uh, uh-huh. a little bit of hard rock, hard, hard rock, hard metal. Um, but again, I'm, I'm a big Young Jeezy guy. Um, Again, Skid Row, I'm all over the place. So anything that's got a little a good vibe to it, you know, we're always listening to that pumping. That's awesome. Now, you're going to be playing in Cleveland for the first time here coming up, which is, you know, in a way kind of a homecoming for you. Now, uh, are you going to have a lot of friends and family at the game, and is this going to be kind of a special game for you? Yeah, I mean, it is my first time being close to home for that, you know, again, fans, friends, family, friends, and such can come to the game. I've already had a couple people reach out to me. Hey, can we meet up before the game? Hey, can you, you know, you, you mind signing the jersey before the game, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's going to be kind of emotional for me, again, homecoming. Um, again, all my people that I went, to, I went to high school with and people that I still am in contact with. And then on top of it, family will be, you know, again, the Cleveland game, it's going to be, it's going to be awesome for us. And then you get to do it all over again, too, in Pittsburgh a little later on, right? You guys got one more against yeah. the Steelers? Yeah, it's actually the following week. So, again, the 23rd up in Cleveland, we're looking forward to it, and then the 30th uh, in Pittsburgh. So, again, a nice, it's a perfect Christmas gift for those who are trying to, you know, think of something for their sons, daughters, or whoever else. <laughs> hey, speaking of Christmas gifts, uh, you know, I, I did want to ask you, you know, once you signed with the Bengals, did you splurge and buy some kind of a big ticket item when you got that first nice paycheck? First nice paycheck? You know, you got to put a ring on the, on the, on the girl, man. I, uh, <laughs> Okay, true, true. I finished up, uh, I finished up paying off uh, my fiance's ring, um, and then uh, I bought a house down in uh, up in northern Kentucky. Uh, so that was probably my big ticket item. Um, you know, I was graciously, you know, had an opportunity with Greenwood Chevrolet uh, in Austin Town to be able to, you know, I'm, I'm driving a, a Chevy Silverado LCZ Z71. It's a beautiful, beautiful truck. So they, you know, we worked out some, so I didn't have to do any vehicles or anything. Um, and then probably my toy, I bought a uh, 2016 Chevrolet convertible Camaro. Uh, okay. Simple, 
simple V6, nothing crazy, just because I know I've got a, a lead foot when I want to. Uh-huh. So again, it's a nice, it's a nice toy, but right now it's all wrapped up uh, under underneath the cover just for winter time. Yeah, how about for everybody else? Uh, any special Christmas presents this year? Uh, for me or for other people? Yeah, for other people. For other people, um, nothing too crazy. I would say again, this is our first, kind of my first Christmas with my fiance, and right. again, she's got a large family. I got a large family, so we wanted to keep things under wrap without getting too crazy. You know, uh-huh. obviously setting that ex- expectation of uh, you know five hundred dollars per person. We didn't want to do that too crazy, so we kept it simple and basic because that's the way I was raised, uh, same way she was raised. So. Again, it's uh, people. They'll be very appreciative of what they get, and I know. Again, there's been some personal touches behind a lot of the gifts. You know, I'm a little bummed out about that. I was thinking maybe a nice Lake Erie walleye boat for your old man. This way, you know, I could cash in a little bit on it too. I could take advantage of it. Come on, Billy. Come on, a walleye boat. Let's go. Hey, the walleye boat. Hey, we just we got a, we got our good connection, and uh, Mark Sudol who hits us up. We go up there in Cleveland. Um, I know uh, my dad's going to have a good Christmas. I can promise you that. He he sent me some very specific items. Okay. To make sure that the to make sure that the walleye trips are a little bit more uh, secure and productive when we go up there. So oh, we're that... uh, we're lo- we're looking forward to it next uh, next spring and summer. Awesome, awesome. You know, we were talking about you guys have the uh, the the uh, the Browns this week, the Steelers next week. Things are pretty tight in the AFC North right now. You know, what are your thoughts on how everything is panning out at this point? Um. You know, I think it's a unique perspective from my behalf. Um, again, it's it, it, it's frustrating, but again, it's the game of football, and you know, it's the highs and lows that I talked about earlier. Um, you know, we had we were coming off of you know early success in the season, four and one, beating the Ravens on a third on a Thursday night football game. Um, you know, feeling pretty good about ourselves, and then you know, kind of hit a wall, you know, some injuries, some things happen. But you know, the thing, and, and down here in Cincy, guys just keep fighting. Uh, it doesn't matter. Again, it could. You know, we played a one of the top AFC teams in the LA Char or the uh, LA Chargers last week. It took them down to the last 35 seconds of the game. Well, um, how about that game know, last night? Crazy, absolutely crazy. You know, I didn't get I didn't get to watch too much of it. My fiance was uh, she was trying to hog a little bit of my time, uh-huh. so I was spending some time with her. Um, but yeah, absolutely crazy and to see those guys winning on a two point conversion. The guys wide open in the back of the end zone. You know, I know some. Uh, I know some. In, there'll be some tough meetings today reviewing that film. Now, uh, will, will Baker Mayfield's comments about Hugh have any pack, any impact on the way you guys approach the game coming up here for the big rematch? Uh, I don't think so. I think again, the way that we're playing right now, or again, we're continuing to establish the identity in our run game. You know, being more productive in some of our read options, and and for the pass game with our backup quarterback Jeff Driscoll, who's doing a fantastic job. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a believer, and I was the same way when I was at Fitch, the same way I was at Ohio State. If the run game is successful, again, the pass game will open up, and there's just many options that you can go and attack people offensively. Uh, just because the relationship with Hugh and, um, you know, obviously all the Browns players, it'll be better. So it'll be, you know, again, part two of the, of the documentary series of, of Hugh Returns type aspect. But our job is to go out there, you know, smack, punch him in the mouth and make sure that we're playing a physical game and go out there and try to execute at a high level. Excellent, excellent. Now, to this point, what would you say was the all-time favorite game that you played in from on any level in your career? Um, you know, I think with my short NFL career, I'm still a little bit biased to us playing uh, Penn State last year, my senior year. Uh, again, coming back and winning 39-38 and, you know, being down 20, 17 or 18 points at one time. And just to do that with the brotherhood that we had last year and the team we had, just a phenomenal, unbelievable feeling. Um, again, I think right now for me, you know, coming back and beating the Colts in the NFL, if we're just going to look at NFL games, was pretty exciting. Again, for my first ever NFL game. So that'll always have a little bit of merit for me. Awesome, awesome. Well, listen, Billy, thanks for taking some time out with us, man. I really appreciate the conversation. And, you know, I'm a Browns fan, so, you know, I'm hoping you have a good game coming up here on Sunday, you know. But, uh, you know, next week against the Steelers, man, go at it, brother. You know, take care of business. <laughs> Hey, we're going to do our best.